Hello and welcome to this tutorial for the board game Black Angel. As you can see it takes up a lot of space on the table so I hope you can see all of it well enough. I'll try to show you some things close up. Let's get started. You are going to play until someone triggers the end of the game. Then you finish the round and after that you play one final round. Then the game ends and whoever has the most points is the winner. You get some points during the game and there is a bonus scoring at the end of the game. That's already a few things to explain. First, what triggers the end of the game? That can be two things. The game is either close to the end when this Black Angel spaceship reaches this planet or when this deck of red cards runs out. And then you finish the round and play one final round. A round is quite simple, when every player has had a turn, that's all. Next, what are the bonus points that you can get when the game is over? If you have any of these black tiles in the middle of your player board, then they give you as many points as the tile says. If during the game you have moved any of these tiles to the right side, then they still give you points but no more than 4 points. You score a maximum of 4 points for each black tile on the right side. But if there are any cards tucked under your player board next to those black tiles, then you get an extra 2 points for each card. If the game ended because the red cards ran out, then that's already it for the bonus scoring. But in case the game ended because the spaceship reached the planet, there's one extra thing. You can take all of your own robots from this middle space and all the items you have at the top of your own player board, put everything together and add them up and then you get half the points for that. Alright, how do you play the game then? What do you do when it's your turn? Look at your own information sheet. When it's your turn, you can do either this or this. Sequence A or sequence B. That's it. Just go through all of this or all of this from top to bottom, A or B. Sequence B is mostly resetting things, so I'll start with explaining sequence A. Step 1. If you want, you can take one of the cards and slide it under your own player board. It can go by one of these six spaces that show little arrows at the bottom and the left side. Then you can use the special abilities that are written on the tiles that you have placed on your own player board. If you slide a green card under here, then you can use all the green tiles. Use the tiles that have the same color as the card you chose here. If you want, you can also choose to place one of the red cards here. Then you can activate all the tiles in that row. So that's the first thing you can do in sequence A, but it's optional, you don't have to. Later in the game these cards will get removed, so don't be afraid to use this action. Step 2. You take one of your own dice and use that to do one action. Every player has their own dice in their own section. I'm playing with pink, here's my pink disc on the board, so this is my section to keep my dice in. I take one of these and use this for one action. I'll explain each action in a moment. But first, step 3. The last thing of sequence A is that you can take one card from these decks you take a card that has the same color as the die that you used for your action that goes to your hand and then you return the die to the general supply here. You end this by checking if you don't have more than 6 cards in your hand. And you don't have to count the red cards for that, 
only these three in the main colors of the game. If you have more than six of these cards, then you have to discard some. That's sequence A. Maybe slide a card under your board to activate some tiles, and use one of your own dice to do an action. You end it by taking a card and returning the die. This is what you'll be doing most of the time when you're playing this game. So, what are all the actions you can choose from when you're doing sequence A during your turn? Before I get to that, let me quickly tell you some important rules. The first thing is that you always have a choice between taking one of your own dice from your own supply here, but you can also buy one of the dice from another player. You give them this one resource, this clear diamond token, the other player gets this, and then you can take one of their dice that you like. Another thing is that you can always spend one of your own red cubes to turn that die that you're going to use upside down. Just flip it over to the other side. You can only do this with your own dice, not the ones that you buy from other players. And the last thing, if a die ever has a red cube on it, then it's damaged and you can't use it. Alright, get ready for a bit of a list. There are plenty of actions you can choose from, but you always can look at your own information sheet for help. When it's your turn, you can choose to place your die on one of these spaces on the main game board. There are six spaces, they each have a number even. Here they are. Three of them are the same, but in a different color. I'll explain those in a moment. But you have this yellow space. If you want to do this action, you have to place a yellow die on this space. And then you can buy tiles to place on your own player board. Remember that each tile has a bonus on it that you can activate at the start of your turn. If you placed a die with a number 1 on it, then you have 1 credit to buy a tile. If you placed a 2, you've got 2 credit. You could even buy a black one for that. With a 3, you have 3 credit. You can buy more than one tile if you have the credit for it. A star on a die means 0. You can't buy anything for 0 credit. If you took a black tile, then you immediately refill the empty space. If you took one of the other color tiles, you don't refill them. Leave it empty. Then you place the tile on your own board. Can you place them any way you like? No, that's not allowed. If you took a black tile, then you have to slide it in at the bottom left corner, either from the bottom or from the side, like this. If you took one of the colored tiles, then you have to slide them in from one of the spaces on the outside, so either the bottom or the left side, where the arrows are. If sliding this tile causes another tile to be pushed off your own board, then it's ejected. If it's a colored tile, then just keep it to the side somewhere. If it's a black tile that gets pushed off, then you can place it on one of these three spots on your own board. In that case you will never score more than four bonus points at the end of the game, but at least you do get two bonus points at the end for each card that you have slid under next to it on the right side. So that's the yellow action. Buy tiles. Next, you have this blue action. If you place a blue die here, you can remove little red cubes from the game board. These are damage to your ship, and it's best not to have them. If you place a die with a 1, you can take one red cube from any way you like. If you place a 2, you can take two, and so on. And then, you have a choice. 
either you put the red cubes into your own supply on your player board, or you place them on your own tiles to activate them. You can see each tile has a space for a red cube. As soon as you put one there, you get whatever the tile gives you. My advice is to do this, because later in the game, when you have to remove them, you don't lose them, but you place them here in your supply anyway. That's already it for this blue action. Remove red cubes. Another reason to remove red cubes is that if there are ever two red cubes next to an action, the value of the die that is placed there is decreased by one. So if I put a die with a two here, it counts as only one. And the last action is this green action. Place a green die here to remove red cards from the game board. If you use a die with a 1, you can remove one card, and so on. But there is one rule for this. If a space has more than one red card on it, you can't remove one from there and then one from another space. You have to remove as many cards from one space as you can. But that's it. Go here to remove red cards. You can take the red cards into your hand and you can use those to slide under your board to activate tiles. Another reason to remove red cards is that if there ever is a red card on an action, you first have to do whatever it says on the card before you're allowed to do the action. It will always be something bad, so get rid of those red cards off the board. If there is more than one red card on an action, you only look at the top one. So, those are the three individual actions on the main board. Use a yellow die to buy new tiles, use a blue-gray die to get rid of red cubes, and use a green die to remove red cards from the board. Then, you have these three other spaces that are the same, just in a different color. If you place one of your dice on those spaces, you can move your own little robot in space in a little ship. This other board is space. Here's the big spaceship, the Black Angel. If you already have a robot in space, you can move it around. You can always move as many spaces as the number of the die that you used for this action. But if you don't have one on the board yet, or you want a new robot in space, then you take one of the little ships you have in your own supply on your player board, and you take one of your robots from the center of the game board. You put the robot in the ship, and place it on the same space as the Black Angel, and from there you can move. You're not allowed to move into spaces that show asteroids. But for the rest, you can go wherever you want. If you end your move on a space that has a different color than the die that you used for this action, then that was the end of your action. But if you end your move on a space that is the same color as the die, then there's more. Then you can take a card from your hand that has the same color, so, for example, let's say I used a yellow die to do this space action. I landed my robot on a yellow space, so I take one of my yellow cards and place it face up on the space board. First, I claim this as my card. For that, I take another robot from the middle and place it on this little space on the card. As you can see, it says something in that little circle. That means I can immediately take this reward when I place my robot on here. So, I take my reward. Next, there's a price to pay. Look at all the spaces around my card. These ones. Count up how many of these red icons you see. In this case, there is one red icon next to my card. So I take one red card from the deck and place it on the board. This card says it should be placed on the action with this number. 
so here. And every time you place a red card, you also have to place a red cube. Back to the space board, there's more to do. The card that I just placed shows this in the top left corner. That means new tiles on the market. Remember that you couldn't refill the empty spaces when you buy new tiles from here? That's because you only refill when someone places a card in space. I just did that and the card said I had to add this to the market. First I slide the other tiles to the side and then the new ones come in at the start. I finish my action by placing my robot on the card. As you can see, each card has room on the side for two little ships. But then you're done. These three spaces on the game board are for this action that lets you move your own little spaceships around in space and maybe place a card there. And those were also all the actions you can do by placing a die on the main game board. There is one last action you can choose to do when it's your turn when you're doing sequence A. You can place a die on a card in space and then you can do whatever it says on that card. The only rule is, is that you have to have your own little ship on that card. It doesn't matter if it's your card or not just that one of your own ships is there. There are two types of cards. You have these cards with the double red arrow. They don't do anything. They only give you a bonus when they're removed off the space board. That comes in a moment. But all the other cards are actions. And you can do the action as many times as the number of the die that you placed on this card. You have a special booklet that explains every single card and tile in the game, so keep that nearby. The owner of this card, the player that has their own little robot on here, can then do this action one time for free. When you've done the action, take your die off the card and put it back into the main supply. And that was sequence A so far. Maybe slide a card under your board to activate one or more tiles, and then you must place a die somewhere to do one of the actions. They're all listed on this other side of your information sheet. And you end sequence A by taking one card from the deck, the one that has the same color as the die that you used for your action. If you have more than six cards in your hand, you have to discard cards. But you don't have to count the red ones. They are excluded from your hand limit. That was sequence A. Now let me explain sequence B and then we're done. When it's your turn, you can choose to do sequence B and this is how that goes. This one is easier because it's basically resetting some things. Just follow the steps that it shows on your information sheet. Step 1. Take new dice. Look at how many of your robots you have next to each supply of dice. You can take that many. For example, I have one robot here, so I take one die of this color. I have one robot here, so again one die. And in this one I have two robots, so I can take two dice from this supply. I get four new dice in total. I roll them. And then they go in my own personal space here. If I want, I can pay one resource to put one of those dice down here in this area. And then the other players can't buy that die away from me. But you can only move one of your new dice down here. Then step two. I remove all the cards that I placed around my own player board, the ones at the bottom and the ones on the left. Not the cards on the right, they always stay where they are. And any red cubes that you place on tiles go into your own supply. And now you can use them to flip dice upside down if you want. And the last thing of sequence B is step 3. Move the black angel forward one space, 
this way is forward toward the planet then take the bottom part of the space board this one flip it over and place it at the front done that was sequence B if there had been any one or more cards on this space board or robots in little ships then everything gets removed from the board robots go back into the main supply the little spaceships also go back into the main supply they are lost but the cards go under your own player board on the right side this is for extra points at the end of the game in case the card had a double red arrow you can now get what it gives you this is a reward that you get when the card is removed from space so sequence B is take new dice clean up your own player board and go forward in space if you ever flip over the space board that has the little planet on it you put it back at the front but then you can remove the little planet and replace it with the big planet put it in the middle and then later in the game the black angel will reach it to trigger the end of the game that is if you haven't run out of red cards first we're there this is how you play black angel it's a lot of information but luckily you get help from the main board your player board your information sheet and this booklet that explains all tiles and cards i hope you feel like you have a good sense of how this game goes and that it sounds interesting thank you for watching feel free to leave a comment and see you for the next one <laughs>